front flow again and you find me out of my drive on quite a sunny day working on the Mark II yet again. Well don't let the sun fool you because right now it's absolutely freezing cold. It's uh, minus three degrees, it was minus six last night and it's still minus three so this should be quite a short video because it's too, too damn cold to be out here for too long. Anyway what I'm doing right now is trying to work out how to mount a brake reservoir for the back brake. I've actually got two here, I've got a big one and a small one and I think the small one might be a bit easier to package. So I'm just looking around to see where it can go. Now normally one of these would go around about here behind the side panel. It can't go there anymore because A, I've got the M unit in the way and B, I'm not using the standard Kawasaki linkage which is quite a complicated thing that goes behind here. Got rid of all that. So I think this reservoir will have to go somewhere like that which requires me to make a little bracket. And so I've gone to the usual cardboard design. I've got a little uh, a bolt here that I can take this bracket from. So I reckon if I do something like that and get my little reservoir and mount it something like that, we should be okay. It will need a spacer making, so that's not really a big problem. And it should look like that, if you can see that from way over there. So that should quite work quite well. Now I could make it in aluminium, I can make it in stainless steel, I can make it in steel, and I think I'll make it in mild steel because that's really easy to do. And I can paint it all black and get it powder coated black to match the rest of the area in here with the battery box. Actually, that's not just the Mark 1 version, I'll keep on changing it until I'm happy with the overall design. And that's a great thing about cardboard design, you can keep on cutting it up, changing the height of it, changing this, changing that, making a Mark 2 version, a Mark 3 version. And so you're happy. It's a damn sight easier to cut cardboard with scissors than it is to cut steel or aluminium with a hacksaw. That's, that's for damn sure. So yeah, it'll be something like that. So, so I've got to do that, but not today because it's far too cold. Moving on then, you might notice I've now got a brake line fitted to the back brake for the first time. And this is a brake line from hell that I happen to have already. And it just happened to be the right size for what I needed. And that's great. What I don't have yet is the appropriate banjo bolts because these aren't quite uh, good enough these are all ones so I've ordered some new ones in titanium which should be here tomorrow hopefully so I've just got to make some P clips up or find a way of mounting this this brake line so it's nice and neat as possible the one thing I'm not too happy about is the fact that to make it fit the brake line's got to do quite a sharp acute bend around here at the front to get to the master cylinder but really there's no other way of doing it because the alternative is to run the brake line straight back here which looks even worse so I'm gonna go with that particular option I've also got some holes here of course which will follow the same route to go from my cylinder to my new brake reservoir so I've got to make a bracket I've got to make I'll find some p-clips and um, retain this brake line nice and neat get the titanium banjo bolts on and I think that's the rear the rear brake area finished so that's a, a job for perhaps later on this week when it's not quite so blooming cold so we'll stop here for now because it's just too damn cold to do anything despite the bright sunshine we have at the moment and uh, yeah we'll carry on when I've made this bracket and it's warmed up a bit because right now I'm going to go in the house warm up and have a cup of tea So as you can see, I had a better idea than making a bracket to mount the 
So this is why I'm behind the side panel. I didn't sell it, I just drilled a hole in the battery box and mounted it on there. Also, you may notice that the little space I use behind it is far too big because I don't have the right one at the moment. But I do have an order from eBay where I've bought a few little spaces. It turns out you can buy pretty much any size you want, any hole you want, any finish you want, different anodized colors. So I've bought a few and they should be here soon. And I'm sure one of those will work just fine behind a side panel to mount the, the reservoir spot on. And so that's now pretty much the whole of the back brake finished, except for one small detail, which is that the brake line needs to be secured to the swing arm to make sure it doesn't hit the wheel. So to do that, I've got a P-clip here, a little rubber line P-clip, and as luck would have it, there's a threaded boss on the inside of the swing arm, right where my finger is here. Brilliant, I can use that. But unfortunately, the P-clip isn't quite long enough to be used on that boss, so I have to find an alternative, perhaps make one, or try and find one with a longer tail on it so everything will line up but anyway i'm pretty happy with that so far as i say just that one small detail to go and so my next job is to sort out this and this is the catch for the seat so i'm just gonna take it apart so i can paint it because it's a bit grotty and when i've done that what i've also got here is a genuine brand new little catch from kawasaki because right now the one on there is a bit rusty and tatty so for the cost of a fiver why not just change it over so that's what i'm doing so now let's get this bracket off here and get it painted up i let's prime it and then paint it black of course I might even use hammer because that's quite a tough finish and then we'll get it on the bike and that's another job completed Go. There. And here's the old rusty old loop. But as I say, I've got my nice shiny new one here, all the way from Kawasaki. And so first a coat or two of H primer. And now here we are, it's the next day. It's now time for some hammerite smooth black. And now here's that seat lock, all painted up with this new latch in place, ready to go back on the bike. So all that cutting and filing was just to make a little bracket to mount the rear brake line keeper just in the right spot right there. And so next up I need to fit two of these and here we have some black anodized spacers I bought from eBay. I need to replace two spacers I've already used on the bike because they weren't quite right so I've got these to fit instead. And the two spaces once we place on the bike are here and here and they mount the rear Brembo master cylinder to the new bracket I made some time ago. But as you can see they're plain aluminium rather than black and also they're a little bit too big, a little bit too fat. That's why I bought those replacements. So let's get them changed over and hopefully it'll look a lot better. 
And now here we have the new black and eye spaces on the bike and it does look a lot better. I know it's only a small, a small detail, but details matter. And so now here we are, it's a week later, and today is a big day for the bike, and for me, because the bike is going to Liz's workshop to get the engine fitted today, or at least later on this week. But before it goes, I've got to prepare it for that engine fitment. So I bought this. This is two meters of foam insulation for pipe work. I'm gonna fit it to the frame rails in an attempt to protect the paintwork on the frame and of course the finish on the engine when we have to lug the engine into the frame. Something well worth doing because otherwise you're gonna chip the paint or powder coat on the frame and no doubt also damage the finish on the engine, which isn't good. So now I've got to cut this up and get it taped up on the frame. And so now with the foam insulation on the frame protecting the finish, it's now time for the bike to go to Leslie's garage and get the engine fitted at last.